When I was little, I played a lot of sport with my aunt, but then she got sick with cancer and we stopped. I didn't understand why. I thought, exercise makes you healthy. Wouldn't it have helped her get better? I had so many questions and wanted answers. So, when I grew up, I became a scientist to find out why some people can get sick when they play too much sport. We all know that exercise is good for us, but sometimes it's not so black and white. When we exercise, we produce adrenaline and cortisol, stress hormones. Have you ever felt sick after a lot of stress? That's because adrenaline and cortisol can change our bodies and lower our defenses. After you exercise, some of your immune cells don't work as well. Our immune system does a lot to protect us. It fights parasites, bacteria, viruses, and cancer cells. But after you exercise, with adrenaline and cortisol in your blood, some of these buttons don't work as well. So while your defense against parasites is fine, it's harder to fight bacteria, viruses, and cancer cells. But only for a day, so you can't use this as an excuse to stop exercising. For most of us, this isn't a problem, but for my aunt, it was. Cancer is a battle, and her immune system was trying to fight. <laughs> but after exercise with a weaker immune system, it made the fight harder. It's about balance. The drop in your immune system depends on how long and how hard your workout is. Even when we reach half of what we're fully capable of, we trigger that drop in the immune system. In fact, elite athletes are more likely to get sick and catch colds because they're constantly training, and that takes their immune system for a ride. Now that I know this, I want to find the best exercises for cancer patients so that they can benefit from being active without compromising their immune system. I get cancer patients to cycle on a bike and look at the changes to their immune system. And from this, can develop exercise programs that even help them respond better to their treatment. So now, exercise can help patients get better. So, maybe the answer is less high-intensity exercise and more rest. But because everyone's different, I'm still looking for answers. At heart, I'm still that girl who wanted to understand. Now I know how exercise affects our bodies by making our immune system slightly weaker. Stick to exercises that don't push your body and you'll be all right. That was awesome. <laughs> we can harmonize. Yeah, we'll go. We'll work on that later. Yeah. I just want to say very nice work doing a Tim Mention piece in Perth. That was, you know, your audience. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Good one. Um, I, I'm really interested in what are the current recommendations and, and how widely um, known is, is this the balance and understood both amongst the medical profession, but also, you know, physical trainers and people who are working in, in the health and fitness space. Yeah, well, different cancers are obviously different and individuals are different. Um, so I'm looking specifically at prostate cancer patients and people who are undergoing um, hormone therapy. So I couldn't actually say, you know, for every cancer what you would do. I'm not, definitely not qualified to say that. But we find that with lower intensity exercises, you're still getting those benefits, but you're not triggering that drop in the immune system. But for some patients, it's actually beneficial because I didn't mention, but it's sort of like a roller coaster. Instead of just going down, with that adrenaline, you get a spike in your immune system's function, and then it goes down. So for some people, it's actually beneficial, depending on what kind of cancer they have, you might want certain immune cells to just suddenly get that boost. Uh, Alan, first of all, don't sing. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, yeah. Uh, great stuff, yeah, r really nice. So I'm, I'm curious as to the why this effect kicks in. So it seems like a bit of an evolutionary fail if you've got to run around collecting your food that this could make you sick. So uh, from an evolutionary point of view, is, is there a reason behind this or is there something more important that the body's doing while it's shutting this bit of the system down or something else? Yeah, that's a great question because you kind of think like, why? Um, but 
there are multiple reasons as to why it might be happening. So one of the effects is that immediately after exercise, you've got a lot of immune cells coming into your blood, and then they disappear. Well, obviously, they don't disappear from your body, but they are not in your blood. Um, so one place that they might be going are your muscles, because sometimes when you exercise, you create a lot of micro tears in your muscles, so the immune cells might be like, oh, well, we need to go here. Um, and the other thing is sort of like maybe a backlash from the adrenaline. You've, you've got your fight or flight, your blood's pumping, you've got a lot of immune cells coming in, and then it's sort of just, it's like a wave, it all comes in and then goes out, so potentially that's why we're still looking.